Dr. Tom Roselle live right now, 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle live. We're in studio waiting for your phone calls at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. We're broadcasting to you from 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully you've been out taking advantage of the weather and enjoying the change of seasons, as they say. But if it doesn't get any worse like than this, this is my favorite type of year. It's so nice out there. have a very special program for you and a very special guest, and hopefully we'll answer your questions as well. But if you do have one that's even not on topic, 888 that's how you ask the question. <laughs> but, you know, we spend so much time talking about different types of conditions, and so many times my male patients... For, uh, say, you know, you're forgetting about us. How come it's never directed to us? Why don't you talk about men? Why don't you talk about how... Well, we do talk about men all the time, but today we're going to talk about men. We're going to talk about a condition that shows up with all kinds of different symptoms. We're going to talk about when you guys get ugly and irritable and angry and grumpy and, you know, you lose the enjoyment of doing things. The drive is gone. You actually get a little hot flash every once in a while. You lose your memory. Self-esteem seems to kind of go down the tubes. And, you know, all the commercials are directed to you. It's called the ED commercials, the Cialis, the Viagra, and so forth. What are we talking about? What is the big deal here? We're talking about a condition called male andropause, and it's one that parallels to menopause but there's you know for years people say well only women go through menopause not so so fast guys because guess what we do the same thing unless we're very 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 careful and we've known about this in the medical community in this country since the 1940s that's where the data said you know guys really do the same thing so do we get this midlife crisis this is a physical situation it is physical and it does happen and there's reason for that and to help me talk about the subject is a very very dear colleague someone who's going to be your host your presenter this wednesday evening the 16th of november in our office delivering our in-house continuing education program and it's going to be uniquely male dr scott lamp welcome dr scott how are you oh very good tom thanks for uh, having me aboard it's always fun you're you know you're very very you know for those of i no, i won't do that right now later i will <laughs> <laughs> don't get in trouble you know where i'm going with this but we'll, we'll leave it alone for now um but the truth of it is is that men suffer from hormone imbalances just as badly as women do, in some situations even more so. It seems to be more so in the United States. I was reading an interesting article the other day that after age 50, that about 30% of all men in the United States experience the symptoms that we talked about, from you know, even losing height, you know, bone density loss and the joint pain and the premature aging and the changes of skin and so forth and the weight gain that they can't get off. But that's 30% of U.S. men. That's a huge number. In Australia, only 1 in 200 men up to age 50, 55 experience, and then after age 60, about 10%. That's a fraction of us. What's the big deal here? What's why? Why do we suffer so much? And and what is male andropause to begin with? That's a, probably even a better question. Uh, take us down that road, Scott. Well, I think with the andropause, you're talking about uh, the testosterone levels our body seems to drop. And when we talk about testosterone, we're looking at our vitality of us being males themselves, and those things are going to be to make us strong, help us with memory, cognition, uh, help us with uh, the performance in the bedroom, and those kind of things. And I think that's where that uh, the andropause term is coming from. It says there's a depletion of your hormones, and these side effects seems to be coming up. Um, you, were te- you were talking about the aspect with Australia. It's another interesting aspect. A- aspect right now that if you take a look at the drug medications, a side note, um, that's over 200 drug medications that are out there and growing that have a side effect that actually lowers our testosterone. So one of the things that could be there is like, am I taking a medication right off of that that's actually help, help causing some of these problems? It's uh, you, When you talk about medications, you have to talk about uh, direct medications, things that people are taking because their docs have prescribed them, and people who are being exposed to chemistries, and as we all are throughout our environment, uh, medications, high blood pressure medications, anything that uh, has to do with 
uh, emotional medications, things that upregulate or downregulate somebody's emotional path. The, the primary side effect has to do with libido, has to do with uh, decreased testosterone production, but also, more importantly, our environment constantly is insulting us because of all the xenoestrogens. Mm-hmm. And because you know men and women are both susceptible to estrogenic effects in the body, you see men coming up with more and more cancers, decreased libido. libido. They, they just were not working the way we used to. And a statistic that I've used for years when I lecture on the subject is that by the time a guy gets into his 30s in today's society, he has a fraction of the sperm count that a man who was 60 years old in the 1950s. And that's a hell of a, a note on our, our uh, society. Take us through this. This Wednesday evening, by the way, Dr. Scott Lamb is going to be your host, guys, and he's going to answer the questions that you don't want to ask anybody else, you know, on why you don't do what you used to do, why you can't get an erection like you used to, why you fall asleep all the time, why you hurt, why your body seems to be breaking down and it shouldn't, and maybe your grandfather wasn't that way and your father wasn't as bad as you are, but you are and you're going down the tubes. Well, what you need to do is call our office at 703-698-7117, that's 7 703- Zero three six nine eight seven one one seven. Tell my staff that you would like to attend Dr. Scott Lamp's presentation this Wednesday evening, November the sixteenth, at seven thirty p.m. We do require a reservation, so do it today. You know when the show's over, or call now. Leave a message. They're going to call you back, and they're going to reserve your seat. Scott, take us through the the why we have to look at men and hormones equally as we look at female hormones and why don't we look at them you know why does traditional medicine kind of set it aside well I, first off i think we got to describe what a hormone is i mean a hormone is something that basically why do we have hormones and to make it really simple it has us to adjust to the environment um, so basically when things change in the environment we have these alarm signals that go off it releases sort of these glands that put these things in the blood system to help us respond to the changes in the environment the other thing it helps us to do with is also is helps us to change and grow our bodies too uh, so we go into sexual maturity we have that um, and also to cut, to replicate our species um, we got to be doing that so those are aspects what a hormone does and so since we have that and we have that need to uh, to live and to be vigor and, and those kind of things we got to look at the different pathways that affects and this is a very complicated uh, kind of talk because it's kind of like you're sitting on a balance everything is really well in balance but when you start throwing those balances off all these special pathways that go on get upset and you were talking about estrogen being one, and estrogen dominance is probably one of the most common causes for a lot of the testosterone coming down. Um, the other big thing is an, another pathway we're looking at is the sugar pathway and how much sugar we're taking in and things like insulin resistance, where one hormone can start affecting another hormone. And this is where the balance is. And you got to find out what's your individual balance problem for, per person sometimes to see what things are off. Um, you could have things like the stress reaction that happens, the adrenal response, and that's another pathway that can actually feed into more sugars into the system um, and steal away your testosterone of your body because the thing that's interesting, and, and I know Dr. Sims talks about this in the office, and I think he has a very good uh, uh, way of explaining it, it's like if there's a fire in the building, I'm not worried about... Um, you know, making new testosterone in my body. I'm not worrying about digesting that sandwich I just ate. I want to get out of the way of the fire. And what's going to happen is the body is going to direct its resources to preserve itself from what's happening in the environment, like I talked about before, and try to get you out of there. But it's going to it's going to take away from other places. At a cost. At a cost. And that's what happens. So and then there's deficiencies and things of that nature. There's uh, numerous ones we can talk about that will actually force things down pathways that will actually create a reduction in the testosterone and allow these symptoms that we're talking about. You know, it goes beyond that as well. We talk about structural chemical emotional, looking at three pieces of the triad in any condition. And this is one, particularly with men, that you have to be very, very careful that you look underneath every leaf that you have. When, when you're dealing with low hormone function or inadequate production of hormone or more importantly the inability of the hormone to transport into the system sometimes it has to do with neurological structural problems that are producing pain 
pain by itself increases inflammation, and that inflammation acts as a barrier to transport the hormone into the tissue. So you get a guy that has, on blood testing, he has you know fairly decent hormone levels, not necessarily outrageous off the ceiling, but they're adequate. They're within normal zones. And his estrogen levels are haven't been uh, built up so where they're suppressing hormone formation or testosterone formation, but what you're, you're getting is a barrier, a resistance of the transport, and that often has to do with men having been injured over time, playing sports, hurt their low back, hurt their head, taking a blow to the head, uh, all these things, and then we adapt, we put up with, or we take medications, or we get on different things where now that that whole scenario of what happened after the event, the nerve roots are shut down, the the inflammatory levels get high because the pain pattern is still there and the hormone can't transport. Do you see a lot of that? I know I do. Yeah, I see a lot of that. The, the other thing on the side note, I think like a lot of the cranial work we do in the office, one of the things is is that we always think about the female cycle having, you know, the, the cycles of progesterone and estrogens that change through uh, the 28 days. There is actually cycle changes in males, and there's a thing called the pineal gland, and you take a shot to the head, um, there there is aspects where you can actually change some structural things and put some stress on that particular organ, and that one brings in information from what the outside environment is and tells what's going on and tells our timing aspect. Now, the reason why the male hormone doesn't go up so much and down, it, it does vary and it doesn't change at certain times of the day, but it's very, very sm- small, narrow ranges. But it does, and it's affected by that pineal gland, and that gives us an aspect of our timing. And if the timing is off, then they can start throwing other things out, just like, again, when you're talking about a, a problem with the back and the nerve is not communicating. And I, I, the thing I tell patients a lot is, like, if you have a situation where something's not communicating, like a family, and if you're in your family and something's not communicating, what happens? Usually not good things. And so you've got to be able to communicate downstream, upstream, from the brain to the to the other part of the bodies and so on and so forth. That's very, very important. Yeah, the pineal gland is, is critical. It's a little P-shaped type of organ that sits close to the pituitary. It's kind of the orchestrator of all hormones. And the pineal gland works at nighttime when there's no light being stimulated you know, through the eyes or through the skin and so forth. And it gets its nutrition, if you will. It gets its energetics when the lights uh, are are on. So sunlight and so forth restores it. But the problem is, is that we live in a society also that we go to bed and we have digital printouts or we have a little crack or we have a night light or we have to put a, a light on the other room. We're cave dwellers at nighttime and we're meant to be asleep in darkness. And that restores our hormone function and so forth, but we don't do it. But now you get a gland that's been injured because of cranial blow. And oh, by the way, bad dentistry where the vertical dimension of the jaw, the TMJ, is not normal. So now we're putting pressure in the spinal fluid. And so there's a whole matrix here. That, that flows and cascades one place to the other to the other. When we come back, Dr. Scott, what I want to do is I want to get into what the symptom uh, patterns are, why they occur, what we can do as we go into the next half of the program to change some of these. And the fact is that it's, it's very changeable, but we're, we're dealing with trauma, we're dealing with inflammation, we're dealing with stress patterns that knock the guys down. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott Lamp will be your host and presenter at the Result Center for Healing, November the 16th at 7.30 p.m. He's going to be talking about uniquely males for you guys. So join us. Give our office a call at 703-698-7117, 703-698-7117. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are in studio talking about a fascinating subject that affects a lot of you guys. We're going to call it andropause. It's just menopause, guys. Yeah, you go through it, too, and, you know, you want to ignore it and say you didn't, and but you do, and there's ways of stopping it, just like ladies, there's ways of stopping your menopausal. You know, it, it's a transition. That's all it is. Things change, but they don't have to go into failure, and we're going to teach you how they should otherwise be. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott Lamp at 7.30, the Roselle Center for Healing, the 16th of this month, is going to present Uniquely Male. So if you're having any problems with, 
you know, not being able to get an erection. If you're menopausal and that you have hot flashes, you're a grumpy old man, or, or, you know, you don't have the drive, you don't have the push, you're putting on fat you can't get rid of no matter what you do, you just don't care anymore, your family wants to send you out and readopt you to somebody else's family, well... This is a night that you need to be there. Give our office a call, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend Dr. Scott Lamp's program on Uniquely Male. And we're going to get into it a little bit more in the second half. We're going to talk about some fixes to this as well. But right now, Joe, thank you for holding. How can I help you, sir? Hi, Dr. Lizelle. I was just curious. Uh, you hear these stories about people drinking too much water, flushing the electrolytes, I guess, from their system, and it results in death. And I was just curious, what's a safe amount of uh, water to drink? Take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's the number of ounces that you should have every day. Now, if you drink uh, anything that is made out of coffee or sodas or black tea, which I don't advise any of the which, but you should add that much more water to your system because you're going to dehydrate by that much more. Now, having said that, in the wintertime when it's really cold outside or if you're outside working out hard, you add a little bit more water. And when you're working out and you're sweating and uh, you need to have a little salt in that water, but only sea salt, and sea salt will balance your electric light system. If you're a runner or if you're exercising really profusely, you probably can take the amount of water that I just told you and you can double that safely but extend it over a period of you know uh, hours. So you have runners that are out there that have a camel back on them. There's these soft carriers for water and they, ha- and they can sip on it and sip on it and sip on it. But you want to have an electrolyte replacer when you're really sweating and, and I'll give you a quick one on that. Get a liter bottle and put about six ounces of pure organic apple juice, put an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt, fill the rest of it up with water, and drink one liter of uh, made that way, and then the second liter just plain water. Uh, stay away from the sodas. Gatorade is not the best. Don't let people fool you because the first three ingredients in Gatorade is sugar and you don't need it unless you're really sweating up a storm and you've got pools of water around you. But if you stay with that, if you're exercising hard and you, you double what I, t- I told you based on body weight, you should be safe. There are other times you may add a little bit more, but for most of us, half of our body weight in ounces in water should do it. Help you out? Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. You're welcome. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Okay. Dr. Scott. Yeah. Let's go on. Let's talk about what we've been talking about. Let's talk about male hormones and why they break down. We said, you know, exposures, we said injury, we've talking about stress patterns, all these things over time can knock the, the pillars out from all of us guys. And we begin to lose muscle mass. We can't strengthen up any, anymore. How do we begin to look at, how do, we, how do we predict that this is going to happen? Let's answer that question first. Well, well, first you always got to take a look at: Do you have the uh, the symptoms of it? You got to start looking at yourself and be honest with yourself. And guys out there, you got to be honest with yourselves. A lot of times, uh, I'll go in and look at, and somebody will have a questionnaire and they will answer it, and then they'll answer it uh, one through three, three being a lot, one being very little, and they'll answer everything once. I don't know how often you see that, Tom, but it's like you have to multiply everything by three to get the real effect of Pretty what's much. going on with the person. Absolutely. Um, so that would be the first thing to do. And then there is some testing that could be done. Um, one of the things we like to do is doing a lot of saliva testings on the chemical side of the body um, to take a look at what's going on with that. And there's an expanded male horm- hormone panel that we do. Uh, there's a adrenal stress index, too. And what's good about taking a spit test first, a blood test, is uh, good. first off, when you're doing the adrenals, and we talked about the pineal gland and being the circadian rhythm, you've got to take that sample um, over about uh, three, about uh, over um, four times, uh, four times during the day, and then also the um, and then the spit test for the uh, the males is also uh, is done once. But you want to get the circadian rhythm, you want to see what that is, and then you actually see what's actually going on with the body. Well, the problem is with blood tests versus uh, salivary testing. Is salivary testing gives you the actual hormone that's available to transport in the tissue. The free one. And the yeah. free one. The, fr- yeah. the free hormone. And the total hormone that's available doesn't tell you the whole story. We're going to talk to you a little bit more about that when we come back. And remember, you can call us here at 888-630-9625, 888 
WMAL. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are in studio. 888-630-WMAL. 888-630-9625. My guest in studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, who will be your host, your presenter, this Wednesday evening, November the 16th, at 7.30 p.m. at the Rosell Center for Healing. His topic, Uniquely Male. And that's what we're talking about today. Uniquely Male. All of you guys who are having problems that you thought that was just part of stuff that happens. Well, like anything else, structural, chemical, emotional, particularly in this particular situation, you're going to get injury to your body. You're going to affect the nerves that uh, allow the hormones to work properly. You're going to cause pain. Pain causes inflammation. Inflammation blocks the absorption of infl- or, uh, hormone into the tissue. Stress patterns knock your adrenal system out, decrease your hormone production. And biochemistry, we are constantly being exposed, not only eating the wrong things, but to free-floating xenoestrogens, estrogens that are out there that will change your whole way of living. Not a very, very good thing. Dr. Scott, before we go back, there's a Somebody that's been waiting patiently, and I want to take that one and give her some information because okay. it's important. Lorraine, thank you for calling. Lorraine? Oh, thank you so much, Doctor, for taking my call. How can I'm I help you? You and your staff uh, can help out a, uh, a good friend that just recently got diagnosed with esophageal cancer, cancer of the esophagus, and he lost his wife also recently uh, just the past few days ago so he's under tremendous stress and i immediately thought of you when i when his doctors said well first they were going to operate on the poor dear man and then they decided no they can't for whatever reason so the man's left with cancer of the esophagus no way to treat it and i immediately thought of you and your center because you're famous for finding ways to cure cancers with diet and other therapies it, when you know, and I know right now days count. So uh, you know. Before, do you know? Do you know how far advanced the the condition is? No, I unfortunately don't. But I know that the doctors won't operate, and so and plus he lost just lost his wife, so he's under tremendous stress. So I was thinking maybe it, it might be a, a diet from your nutritionist might buy him some time while he's looking for treatment, or maybe you, even you could suggest some treatments to him. If I put him in contact with you, is there anything you could do to help him? Well, it depends It depends on a lot of things. Number one, you have to remember that uh, anything that's done in the natural community uh, without drugs, without surgery, is to stimulate the body's own immune system right. to begin to heal itself, and that's the only thing you can do. Now, with esophageal cancer particularly, the further it goes, the more deadly it becomes and the more uh, resistant it becomes to any type of, of treatment. Now, having said that, there are dietary patterns that will help. Acupuncture and diet can, can make a significant contribution to any patient who has uh, cancer. Uh, having said that, not knowing more than what you've told me, I really can't point you in any direction with the exception of that in any cancer patient, you want the patient to go uh, dietarily as alkaline as they possibly can, eliminating anything that's acidic to the, uh, to the environment. Uh, Should but I put him in touch with you? I uh, would. I would just have him do this. Have him uh, send us a note through the website, Result Center for Healing, and uh, send it to me, and I will forward it to the people uh, in the office that uh, would be in direct contact. Again, it's you know I'm going to tell you straight up, uh, we're not curing anything, but we're going to be supporting his body's right. ability to to well, that's uh, all turn we us can up. Ask around. Okay, is to buy him more time. That's and, all. And, and and you know, and I know if anybody can do it, I have faith that you can. Lorraine, thank you. I appreciate the call. Have him contact us, and and Roselle I promise. Center dot, uh, Ros- 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 go to Roselle Care. RoselleCare.com. Dot com. Got it. Thank you so much. Thanks for your call. 888 630 wmal Love to talk to you. My guest, Dr. Scott Lapp. Scott, let's get on to the subject here a little bit, and let's uh, continue the process of uniquely male. And more importantly, you know, we've established that we've got injury patterns and stress and uh, biochemical imbalances, but how can a man prevent this he's in his 30s he's uh you know he's worried about this stuff he's in his 40s he's starting to see a few signs of this he's in his 50s and you know he's 
doesn't have what he used to have. And unfortunately, those ages are very young compared to what they used to be. You know, what are you going to tell these guys, you know, heads up, how prevention-wise, what can they do? We're going to talk Wednesday night. Obviously, you're going to talk about the fixes. You're going to talk about what really causes the body to break down, all the inner reactions. And I encourage anybody that's having a problem or knows anyone that's having a problem with male-related hormone imbalances, Dr. Scott is going to be your resource this Wednesday evening, November 16th. Give our office a call, 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to attend. But let's answer that question first. Well, uh, first off, like uh, Tom, you can uh, keep on mentioning things in regards to inflammation. So we will look at uh, try to hold the things that cause inflammation in our body. There's lots of different ways that happens. Um, can I get uh, from heavy metals uh, that can from from dental things to exposures that we have? Um, we can look at cleaning up the digestive tract a little bit too. That's another factor that plays into this, which we haven't even talked about yet. Um, that's one. Uh, look at the structural aspects of the body. What can we do to fix those kind of elements? The the uh, the sacral and the um, the cranial co- component that plays a part where we talked about the pineal gland. Um, so those are those are factors there. Uh, are you doing the exercises you're supposed to? Okay, and, and we're supposed to be exercising and moving fluids in our bodies, and therefore we'd be becoming stagnant in that way. So exercise would be another aspect. And really controlling our sugar uh, cravings. Um, if you've got sweet and carb cravings, there are some problems there, and things are not firing right in the system internally, and that's something to take a look at. And what can I do to take care of that? And we've got lots of different programs, uh, but we've got to tie it uh, individually to you to make it work the best. It's important that men realize that you know we're we're in a society that we're being exposed to so much, and I keep going back to exposures all the time. We're on cell phones; uh, that electrical system is being imbalanced. We put up with pain. Take this aspirin, you know, and deal with it. It knocks out whatever. But when when you have pain in your body, inflammatory levels go up. When you have loss of function, your inflammatories are going up. We have dietary patterns that are horrible in this country. I was with a a dear friend uh, a couple nights ago, and we were talking about foods, and and he's Jordanian, and my family is Sicilian. We're saying, you know, in the old country, foods tasted, a tomato tasted like a tomato. Food tasted differently. It doesn't taste the same here. It's because so much of our foods are genetically modified, and they cause a problem. We microwave stuff, and it changes the matrix of it, and uh, unfortunately, it changes our body balance as well, and we lose the nutrients. We use the vitamins. We, We cook everything. We're losing vitamin C, so we can't repair anything. So I begin to suggest things like vitamin C and D and E and zinc and selenium and flaxseed for men and milk thistle, which works with liver because the liver is important to, so. to denature hormone. And even fermented soy, and that's the key, organic fermented soy. Other uh, soy forms are not great. They are beneficial to men's health, and they make a difference. I think one of the things, too, I want to add to that is, is also when we're talking about even foods are coming from great distances to get to us. Um, and the vitality of the food, it's rotting before it gets to us. So, you know, your vitamin C component to something might be if it's coming two or 3,000 miles away, by the time you get it, you might get 5 to 10% of the vitamin C you're getting. And, you know, look at your fresh farms. Go to your local farm areas um, the, uh, uh, and support those. I think there's a group, uh, I hope I'm saying it correctly, that's slow, slow, farmer, slow farming. And basically it's your local people. I mean, that's, that's the closest to getting freshly picked is going to be there, and we should support that strongly. You know, we've talked so much about people being over fat today and particularly men they get this fat around their belly and they just it's because of dietary inadequacies but it's also because of lack of exercise it's also because of absorption patterns and when we get that fat it holds on to toxin it holds on to uh, hormones and it constantly feeds back into the body and as long as our body fat ratios and we're talking about weight here you know it's the same thing you get a guy that's that's uh I'll use the numbers, 275 pounds at you know, 10% body fat, and compared to a guy who's 275 pounds at 18% body fat, there's a huge difference there. We have to get within our normal body fat. It's not about weight, either for men or women. It's about the composition of that weight because it messes up the hormones completely when it's outside the ranges. You know, We, we look at patients when they come in and... We look at men as well as women in the same context. What's their testosterone level? What is their estrogen level? What is their progesterone level? What is, you know, are they forming bad uh, estrogens, the estradiols and the estrones? Are they forming bad testosterones, the DHTs? And that gives 
a clue. And you look at cholesterol is a good thing because it helps form the production of cortisol, which helps form other hormones, DHEA and pregnenolone, and they go all down. Now, that, you know, a lot of these words are just words to people, but the problem is is that they're important to the body and how they're formed. We talked about uh, progesterone a little while ago, and most people think it's a, it's a female hormone, Dr. Scott, but mm. it's also a male hormone. Right. And it uh, leads into how well your adrenals do, too. It's one of those aspects that uh, testosterone and progesterone actually have uh, similar binding sites with we talk about how it binds to cells. Um, one of the things I want to talk about in regards to when you were mentioning something with the fat, the, the fat base and the uh, how we're putting weight on, especially with men around the belly and the thighs and also in the breast tissue, the other thing that's doing is, is as you produce more of that, you actually start the, the fat cells are the ones that start producing the estrogen. And so that can be something to kind of start turning your male hormones to female hormones. And you start seeing that, that should be a major sign to you. And they compete with each other, too. Exactly. The, the transport uh, processes are the same, and one's going to get in faster. And when they're artificially produced estrogens, we really have a problem. That's one of the reasons, by the way, guys, more and more of you coming up with prostate cancers and large prostates, you're getting up in the middle of the night, is because of the exposures. We talked about water. One of our callers called today and said, you know, well, what about water? And I gave him the ratio, you know, divide your body, uh, body weight in half, and that's the number of ounces you should have in water every day. But here's the other piece. Don't do it out of plastic uh, bottles because plastics produce estrogen and we're hurting ourselves we're seeing more and more plastic everything we're cooking in plastic you put something in a, a plastic container and pop it in the micro microwave you're producing estrogens that are being absorbed into that food and guess where it's going into your body so we have an issue so dr scott how do you look at that how do you know you know how do you get somebody to change that's even a better question how do you get somebody to to realize that their health is a do-it-yourself program that it is in their hands that's an interesting question because, again, we're dealing with males. Um, one of the things is is that you've got to realize that some of these things that are happening, some of these signs are not something like, oh, well, you know, somebody else has that, so it's fine with me. You've got to come to a realization and understand it. And I think one point I want to make, um, there's a couple of things we didn't talk about, symptoms that, that might not, you know, might be thinking as being a possibility as a problem. One being is decreased um, uh, spontaneous erections in the morning. And if that's not happening, you should be happening in that every day. And then what happens, we might be seeing that 20 to 30 years of age, and you think it's not a thing. You don't even think to look for it. Another thing that also has a place with this is also when we're talking about cardiovascular diseases, if you've got a lot of hemorrhoids or varicose veins, that might be also associating some things that's happening with the uh, the plumbing underneath. That's right. And that's something you need to take a look at strongly. You know, one of the things I'll tell guys is, you know, if you've got varicose veins in your legs, you probably have varicose veins in the plumbing that goes to the penile shaft and so forth, and, that can, yeah. and that can cause you problems. And it's, it's all related to liver congestion. It's related to weight that sits in the pelvic girdle. It's it, you know there there are symptoms that produce other symptoms, that, but the underlying question why is that is not being addressed. And I know Wednesday night you're going to be addressing why you're going to give uh, a lot of not only this is what happens is what you have to do to stop it, but you're going to uh, talk about some herbs and some remedies. We're going to talk about that also just for a minute when we come back uh, from the next break. But this Wednesday evening, November the 16th, Dr. Scott Lamp will be your presenter at the Roselle Center for Healing, 7.30 p.m. He's going to be talking about Uniquely Male. Love to have you as our guest, but all it requires is a phone call. So you got to pick up the phone. You have to call 703-698-7117, 703-698-7117. And remember, we have limited space. So be there. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio today at 888 wmal We've been broadcasting from 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. My guest, Dr. Scott Lamp, who will be your presenter this Wednesday evening at 730 at the Rosell Center for Healing, November the 16th. Coming up real quick, if you'd like to attend and learn more about uniquely male problems, call our office at 703 703- 698-7117, 703-698-7117. Dr. Scott, got a question for you. Shoot. If, you know, people ask, okay, so I'm on, I have to take Viagra, I've got to take Cialis, I've got to take whatever, you know, to handle my ED problems. Is there a natural, are there natural remedies that you can recommend that work equally as well? 
Um, I'll probably give you one that's going to be uh, the poor man's uh, uh, remedy. It's called L-arginine, and it helps with the nitric oxide to actually get some of that fluid into the uh, into the penis. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of other ones that are out there. We'll talk a little bit more about those. But, again, they're very specific to the type of person. Uh, and I'd be careful when I start making some of the suggestions because they could be, depending on what kind of problem they have, there's a lot of things that need to be covered. So l arginine would be the easiest one to say on that. Let's go to the phones. Rod, thank you for calling. How can we help you? Hello, Rod. Rod's gone. Oh, well. So... <laughs> I was going to take, because that was right on topic, Rod had a question about uh, hormone problems and stress patterns. You want to handle that? Sure. I mean, I think one of the things with the stress patterns, again, is, is again, what, if you're doing a stress pattern, you've got to support the adrenal glands. Uh, and, again, it's one of the things we do in our office. We would actually look at uh, looking at saliva test, seeing where your adrenal glands, how they're functioning, uh, and then try to get those on hold. I think the other aspect is really looking at exercise, uh, maintaining it. I mean, if you've got an adrenal surge, it's, it's our primitive uh, reaction, um, that uh, reflex that tries to get us out of danger. We put some, dumps a lot of sugar in the system and actually part of the fight or flight response is running get away get that kind of element and you need to have exercise as part the, of that the, ti- the tiger is coming there's actually three primary hormones that are important in measuring stress and we do those on a saliva salivary test spit test and you're looking at cortisol you're looking at dhea and you're looking at progesterone and exactly. it's those are three of the most important ones and everything else is kind of secondary to that when it comes to, to dealing with uh, this whole issue but uh, we're going to be talking about that you're going to be talking about that very specifically in a lot of different uh, uh, side events. So, but how you know what would you recommend somebody that's under stress specifically? What can they do? They're in. They're they're fighting the tiger. They're running away from it. How would you? How can? What would you recommend that they can do to dampen that stress pattern specifically? Well, again, I was talking about you've got to make sure you uh, you got to get some exercise in there. You're probably going to need some sort of adrenal support. Um, you've got to get some sleep to recover. Um, sleeping also helps recover the body, also helps recover some of the growth hormones. So some things of vitality to bring things back. So those are the wings I would say, say right off the bat you need to do. Um, you really got to get away from, if you got sweet and carb cravings, that's going to be an insult to the system too. So you really got to see what you got to do to cut back on that. I want to remind you that ongoing sponsor of Dr. Tom Rizal Live is thermographycenters.com. Give Dareth Painter a call, 703-943-7248. That's 703-943-7248. Dareth Painter, and she'll tell you all you want to know about thermographic imaging. Add it to your annual examination. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We're here every Sunday at 12 noon, giving you the most up-to-date information possible in the world of integrative and holistic care. Without drugs, without surgery, this is your go-to place. Join us next Sunday and every Sunday. And if you'd like to visit us, do it online. See you later. Bye.